Okay, today we're talking about something that personally I'm really passionate about, and that's the editing software called Adobe After Effects. So After Effects is a really powerful piece of software and it contains a lot of tools kind of geared towards the motion design industry. So like animated graphics and the kind of stuff that you see on like television and there'll be like phone numbers popping out at you and be like one, five, triple, don't worry about it. But it's also a really powerful tool for filmmaking as well. Like we can work in 3D space, um, working with green screens, keying. We can track objects within our footage, remove stuff from our footage. And there's also really powerful tools for rotoscoping, which means like being able to cut somebody out from one piece of footage and then composite that in another piece of footage. But then when it comes to using After Effects as a filmmaking software, I think a lot of people are put off just because there seems to be a lot going on and the tutorials that you see online are always delving into some really specific task in After Effects and you're just thinking, how can I apply this to the holiday video I wanna make? So today I just wanted to jump into After Effects with a beginner's view and show you guys how we can edit like a basic clip just using After Effects, just as you would in Premiere Pro. We're gonna get a feel for the menus and you know, how the timeline looks as opposed to Premiere Pro. And then by the end of this video, hopefully we'll be able to jump into more detail in future videos about After Effects. Cause with this YouTube channel, I'd really like to jump further into like editing softwares and pulling off effects and that kind of stuff. That's really what I like doing and that's kind of how I like to tailor my style. If there's an opportunity to like do a clever little mask somewhere or a little like zoom transition, not in a cliche way, but I love just pulling off those little tricks because it adds like that finesse in your videos. And I think learning After Effects allows you to see those opportunities when you're out in the field filming so you can shoot to edit and then that's just gonna enrich your videos that much more. So yeah, I guess the point I wanna make just before we jump into the software is I think the workflow of After Effects really helps us as filmmakers to sort of think more creatively. And once you get a hang of the interface and how everything works, I think you'll be surprised at how different your edits start to look as compared to when you're editing in Premiere Pro, where everything's a bit more linear. And then as a result, maybe you start thinking a bit more linear as well. And I don't know, I just think it adds that little spice. So let's jump in. Okay, so we've opened up After Effects and as you can see, we haven't imported any clips to our project yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got five clips from my trip to Japan last year. Let's drag those in and then here they are. So the raw files are gonna appear in your project panel on the left side in here. And once we start editing all that, it's gonna appear down here in the timeline. But for now, we don't have a composition yet. So a composition in After Effects is what a sequence is in Premiere Pro. So let's go come up to composition here and hit new composition, or we could have just pressed this new composition handy button there. And as we've mentioned in previous videos, we're gonna to keep to the 24 frames per second timeline, and we're just gonna keep it at 1920 by 1080. So let's call this composition starting out. And here, we're gonna decide how long this composition is. Now we can go back into the composition settings anytime we like and change how long we want it to be. But for now, let's just keep it at one minute and 30 seconds. All right, so here's our composition. It's called starting out. And we've got nothing in here at the moment. So let's start off by dragging this clip of Mount Fuji. Boom. Couple of things to notice. First up, our composition is 1920 by 1080, but our clip was in 4K. So let's go change that so that it matches the composition. So to do that, what we can do is press this little drop down arrow here next to our layer, hit drop down again, and then here's all the transform properties for our layer. Now in Premiere Pro, all these would appear up in this corner here in the effects panel. So that's one difference already in After Effects. We can adjust settings for our clips down here, sort of where the timeline is. So let's change this to HD instead of 4K. So HD is half the size of 4K. Bang, there you go, 50% scale. So now the other thing is, how do we play back this footage? So one thing about After Effects is that we have a lot of keyboard shortcuts that help speed up our editing process. Probably the first and most important one you need to know is that spacebar equals play. So let's just hit spacebar. And there you go, it starts playing back. So we've got this piece of footage here. 
and obviously we don't want to use the whole thing. So we've got to cut this footage. So to cut a piece of footage, we're going to hold Control Shift D, which is going to duplicate the clip, but sort of split it as well. And then just say we want to keep this part, we just delete this layer here. Now there's also like indicators here as well for your layers that shows how far they extend, but they don't render like the de-highlighted bit. De-highlighted, is that what a word? So let's shift this to the start of our composition. So let's speed up the pace a bit here. Um, bring this one in. So yeah, we can play this back and if we were going to make a cinematic edit, this is what we'd do. We'd bring in our footage and place them in order one after the other and that's essentially the basic workflow of After Effects. To cut our clips, we're hitting Control shift d It's the same principle as Premiere Pro except rather than just using a linear timeline where the clips appear one after the other, um, in After Effects we're using layers that stack on top of each other but if you still order them so that they play one after the other, it's the same effect as editing in Premiere. So let's make another composition. Let's just call this example two. And let's bring in these two clips. So we're just gonna make a little cool effect, I guess, a little cinematic edit using some basic principles from After Effects. So in this clip, we're walking across a crossing in Tokyo and there's lots of people walking around and yeah, I don't know, I think it looks pretty cool. And what I'm seeing is that there's people sort of like moving across the frame that would make for a really good transition in terms of like a mask reveal. So I think I'll do that now just to show you because I think I might be terrible at explaining this. So, so we're gonna play here, we're gonna stop there, we're gonna start masking. So here we're gonna select our pen tool and yeah, let's just start outlining control minus to zoom out. Start masking here, so here's our mask. Let's go in here, here, and we want to subtract instead of add. Let's just uh, feather this mask a bit so it's looking like it has some motion blur. And then we're gonna click mask path, zoom in to our timeline a bit so there's more space to work with with our arrowhead. And we want the mask to sort of end up along this line at this point. So let's start selecting our points here and redraw the mask so that it works well for this frame. And now if we scroll through here, we're just gonna fix up the mask where it doesn't quite align to where we want it. And then After Effects will automatically add masking keyframes where we move our markers, mask markers. That's looking all right. Maybe this point here we could do a bit better. And let's track backwards a bit to make the mask follow her before we started masking. Back to when she is first enters frame. To make the mask reveal happen, what we're going to do is grab the layer from underneath this layer and drag it underneath where we've done our mask. And then what you'll see is a cool little transition. Now we can see sort of like where this transition happens if we open if we drop down our arrow for our layer and then you can see the keyframes that we've created for our mask. So lastly, let's just explore another basic feature of After Effects, which is time remapping, which is essentially making slow motion or fast forward action. So we right click on our layer and we go to time, enable time remapping. And now we can select two points. Just zoom back in here. Let's make a point here. And then by bringing these two points closer, what's going to happen is the footage is going to speed up. If I was to drag it further apart, the footage would slow down. Further together, speeds up. So let's just have it that close and fast motion. So let's play back our two clips now and see what it looks like. Woman comes across, bang, reveal, speed up. And if we had that playing to some like, I don't know, EDM music or something, it would sound, you'll be, you're essentially Sam Calder already, okay. So what I'm getting at is that just by applying two basic techniques, we've made like a cool little edit that we can apply to a cinematic video. So hopefully what you can take away from this is that After Effects isn't as scary as what people make it out to be. 
or how you think it might be. Instead of the clips just being one after the other in a single line like Premiere Pro, it's stacked on top of each other in layers. And by having those layers in place, we can create different effects as we just did in our mask reveal. And really the more you start working in After Effects, the more you start learning about the different transitions and effects that you can pull off. Of course, with any video, it's all about the story, but I think with these little techniques and these little visual effects, it just helps bring some life to your video. When I don't use After Effects, it's because I'm editing maybe like long pieces of dialogue. If I was to edit a long piece of dialogue in After Effects, what would happen is that I would get maybe like a hundred different layers of the same clip and just which is just me talking and then the timeline would just look ridiculous. What I don't do in After Effects also is color grading. For color grading we jump back into Premiere Pro, same as audio and my sound design. So there are pros and cons to both Premiere and After Effects and essentially different uses. They're different pieces of software that are used for different things. And by using just one by itself without even thinking about the other is a mistake, I think, because there's features in both that can add so much to your videos. And we shouldn't just neglect one because it seems scary and we don't want to learn new things. In the next video, we're going to kind of delve into how I pulled off that cup slide effect in sort of the intro sequence I did for this video. So if you want to hang around for that, maybe click subscribe on my channel. Otherwise, have a good day, guys, and I'll catch you later. See ya. You're